hope you are doing great. Mr. Marsh and my husband has been hard at work on the new design of the grow tower. He's actually in the shop right now working on it, so that's exciting. But in the meantime, I thought that I would share another herb from this herbal apothecary book. I did a video recently on Old Man's Beard, which you can check out in the show notes if you haven't seen it yet. And today we're actually going to be talking about yarrow. So the cool thing is yarrow is an antiviral as Old Man's Beard is, and it grows abundantly around here. Last season, I harvested the yarrow and then I hung it up to dry and I dried it and I've been using it as tea throughout the season. But today I thought that I would do something fun. My mother-in-law in the last video requested the biscotti recipe, so I thought that I would share that recipe plus add a little healthy twist by adding some dried yarrow to it. And then later I'll also be showing you a wild rose and yarrow infused oil that I'll be using to make soap. So I've never made soap before. I'm really excited to try it. I'll have to share that with you in another video. But in the meantime, let's get to these biscotti. I've made this recipe several times. And the cool thing is, is it's made out of sunflower seeds for the flour. So we're gonna grind up some sunflower seeds. That'll be our base. And then we're gonna add some extra stuff. So let's get going. First, we're gonna start with the sunflower seeds and putting them in the food processor to make the flour. We need two cups. As you can see, it's a coarse flour. It's kind of a little bit like cornmeal or a coarse sand. So we'll add that to our bowl here. Now I actually should have done this first. We're gonna be using flaxseed instead of egg here, which is so great because it has omega-3s in it. So you wanna let this sit for about five minutes. So we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of water in with the flaxseed. Gonna give that a little stir here. And then we'll let that sit while we add the other ingredients. Need one tablespoon of arrowroot starch according to the recipe. I don't have arrowroot, I have tapioca, and I usually use them interchangeably. So we're gonna add that right there. And the sea salt I already added in here, a fourth of a teaspoon of sea salt. I like to use Celtic sea salt because it has a lot of the good natural minerals in there. Okay, so we're gonna whisk this up. Now we're gonna add our dried fruits. I had dried cranberries on hand, so that's what I'm using. You could use dried blueberries. I've used dried currants. You could use raisins. You could use chopped up dried apricots. So we're gonna stir that in there. Now we're gonna add our yarrow. I'm going to be using about a tablespoon here of the dried flower heads, and then I'm just gonna crinkle them up. I think that will work. Yarrow is a little bitter, so you don't want to go over the top with it. Okay, mix that in. We're also going to be adding some hemp hearts. Hemp hearts are great because they have omega-3s in them as well. It calls for sunflower seeds, pepitas. Uh, I didn't have any of those, so I'm going to use hemp hearts. These are super healthy biscotti. And I also wanted to mention, normally I like to soak and then dehydrate my sunflower seeds. It makes them easier to digest. It gets rid of some of the anti-nutrients. I didn't take the time to do that here. We'll be just fine. One teaspoon vanilla. Very 
sweet. So you can actually add um, chocolate chips or cacao nibs um, into the recipe, or you could dip the whole thing in chocolate once it's done. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. If you like it a little sweeter, you can add a little more sweetener. The recipe calls for maple syrup, but I like honey. I'm hoping this year we can have these and have our own honey. That would be so awesome. Sometimes the honey is a little more runny. This one is not. It's a little harder to mix. Oops, I was gonna add it to the flax seed. Get it mixed up a little bit. In goes the flax seed and the honey. Now it said to use a large wooden spoon to stir it for about 30 seconds. The recipe says that it'll seem like there's not enough liquid, but just keep stirring. You could also add some spices in here. Cinnamon would be great, nutmeg. You want to make sure that it's pretty tight. A little trick too, if your hands stick to the dough too much, you can rinse them in cold water. The recipe says to make two bricks out of it, but I find one works just fine. Okay, so we actually need to bake this two times. The first time we're gonna bake at 350 degrees for 18 to 22 minutes, and then we'll turn the oven down and finish baking them after we cut them. In the oven we go. I always like to set the timer for a little shorter, so I'm gonna set it for 15 minutes. While those bake, I wanna take you on a little adventure that I went on earlier today. I went and tried to find yarrow in the snow. <laughs> so I couldn't actually find any fresh yarrow, but I was able to find what I believe to be the dried heads. If we could find some yarrow even in this deep snow here I thought this was yarrow but I'm not sure it is but we're gonna dig and see if we can find some I wasn't able to find any leaves they're pretty much all dead and gone by now I found some green grass underneath the snow but I can see the leaves here and I think they are it's hard to tell because they're all dried and shriveled but there is yarrow all over here in growing season. So I'm pretty sure all of that is yarrow. But we're gonna have to go home and compare to our dried yarrow that I have, that I gathered this last season. So this is the yarrow that I found today. And I came home and looked. And I'm pretty darn sure it's the exact same thing. Now I wouldn't recommend using this yarrow as it's been out in elements and as you can tell it does not look as good as the ones that I harvested and dried when they were fresh and I found a little mold on this so um, not the best to use but it's cool that we found it. I also wanted to share some other medicinal properties of yarrow. It has other properties besides uh, being an antiviral. It's also called ladies mantle, noble yarrow, old man's pepper, unlike old man's beard. My husband does like pepper but He's not old man, he's a young buck. <laughs> Studies show yarrow's antimicrobial and antiviral abilities. In this era, when antibiotic resistance is growing, alternatives are necessary and nature is providing us options. Thank you, Jesus. When yarrow was tested against five different types of bacteria, 
and two fungi, results indicated that possessed a broad spectrum of antimicrobial activity against them all. One study showed that yarrow can reduce the levels of serum lipids, improves intestinal health. Um, I also have here, it helps with digestion, supports blood circulation. Yarrow has a great affinity for the cardiovascular system, moving the blood to support other parts of the body as needed. It's excellent for stopping hemorrhages that are bright red in color and for breaking up congested blood, such as bruises and wounds with symptoms of chills and fever. Use yarrow to direct the blood to normalize body temperature, induces sweating. I believe it can help with fever. Yeah. Oh, this is a good story. I loved reading an account from herbalist John Christopher in 1976 about his administration of yarrow to his daughter who was sick with influenza. She had gone to their country home for a visit and fallen ill with a high fever, restlessness, and a headache. He noticed yarrow growing nearby, collected it, and gave her hot yarrow tea despite her initial protests. By the second dosage and within 20 minutes, she was perspiring freely. Within the hour, she reported feeling better by morning and she had recovered. This perfectly demonstrates the ease with which you can help someone with a safe, readily available resource with confidence in the knowledge of plant medicine. That is so cool. It says, avoid large doses during pregnancy. Allergic reaction cases are rare. So then I also want to show you the medicine cabinet part of this book. This book is so great. Use it as an infusion, two teaspoons per cup, steep 10 minutes, one to three cups per day, or drink four to six ounces until um, perspiration begins. You can use it in a cyst bath, you can make a tincture out of it, and then we're also going to be making an oil out of it. Uh, just some other things that I wanted to throw in there real quick. Actually, the root can help with toothaches. It can be preserved in rum or brandy. That doesn't sound like a bad remedy, does it? It also helps keep flies and mosquitoes away. Anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. That is so cool. And I've also read that it helps with ladies and that time of the month issues. So I've been taking, I'm gonna try to drink yarrow tea. <laughs> so uh, next I'll show you, I'll finish up the biscotti and then we'll do the oil. Okay, the biscotti have come out of the oven. They only took about 15 minutes for me until the edges started really turning brown. I think because I used honey instead of maple syrup that may have made a difference in the, the timing. I've lowered the oven to 275. I've let these cool a little bit and now we're going to cut them into our biscotti. So about an inch or so. You want to cut straight down instead of sawing. One of my favorite parts about this recipe is that you can snack on it as you make it and as you go. <laughs> they don't have to be totally done. There's no raw egg or anything like that to think about. Okay, so then we're gonna take our biscotti and we're gonna lay them flat on the cut side down. You could also cut these again if you wanted them a bit smaller. So then we'll just flop them back on our sheet here.
make our yarrow and rose infused herbal oil. This recipe is from Colleen at Grow Forage Cook for Myth. She had a recipe for wild rose and yarrow soap. I've been wanting to learn how to make homemade soap and I saw this recipe and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have these ingredients. So uh, last season also I harvested wild rose petals. And they also grow abundantly around here, which is just amazing. God is amazing. Um, and so this recipe calls for a half a cup of wild rose. Now wild rose is actually an antibacterial. It um, is an antidepressant according to one website that I read. Uh, it also has other medicinal properties. Okay, and then we're gonna do a half a cup of our dried yarrow here. I also wanna mention that both of these are actually diuretics. So when you drink your tea, I'm like, why am I going in the bathroom so much? Oh, I drink your tea. cup of yarrow into our quart jar. Make you a mess. Bruge. Mr. Martian would agree. <laughs> I'm going to cook. Okay, so then it says to take 20 ounces of olive oil. This is organic, I believe, virgin olive oil. I got it from Azure in bulk. I just want to make sure it's oil. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then cover with a lid and infuse for several weeks, then strain. Use in place of regular olive oil in soap recipes. You also want to make sure that all of the flowers and leaves, all the bits, are covered in oil because you don't want anything to get moldy. Definitely learn that with fermenting preserving. Now also these wild rose petals, um, I let them sit in the light a little bit too long so they're not as colorful as they were unfortunately, but I think they will still do the job. How exciting! I'm so excited. Well, so we'll let this sit for it says several weeks. I don't know what that means. Um, so I'll have to uh, play it by ear and see how long I let it infuse. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for the soap. I think our biscotti are done. Again, I added four minutes to the 10 minutes, so they've been in 14 minutes, and they look perfect. So we'll just put them on a cooling rack. I am so excited about this oil. Okay. They are a little hot. here. I love this thing. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. See, my mom got me this. So I think I would have cut these in half because they are falling apart in the middle, but that's okay. So I'm excited to try one. I've been nibbling on them a little bit, to be honest, but it's going to be a little hot. It's definitely warm. Sorry. <laughs> it is definitely more like a healthy snack versus like a sweet biscotti like you would think. But I think it's the perfect thing for in the morning because you're not going to spike up your blood sugar too much. And I can taste the yarrow. Maybe a little bit too much. Maybe a little less yarrow, but it's not bad. It, it has like a little bit of a bitter flavor. And the cranberries make it a little tart so you could use something a little sweeter and add a little more honey or a little more maple syrup but overall i'm happy with these guys here so the sun is going down and i've had a great time making this video today i hope that you've enjoyed it and you've learned some things along with me i'm still learning so mr Marshall just showed up he's here to help close out the video how yeah. was your day honey 
Uh, busy get, making molds and getting the next version of the tower built. As long as the snow melts, we can get parts in. Right now we got a lot of snow, so parts can't come in, but got all the design done, and now we're making the molds for the new tanks. And uh, so I did some welding, and then I'm going to be taking a shower because they stink. <laughs> and yes, uh, <laughs> uh, doing it all again tomorrow, so yeah, not a bad day. Very good. So you've been busy in here making a video? Yeah, you want to try my biscotti? I have dirty hands, so. That's okay, you're the one eating it. <laughs> okay. A lot of lemon in it. No lemon. No. Mm. Yarrow. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's go. Nice. Well, thank you guys so much for following along with Mrs. Martian's video here. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to ring the bell down below and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is Mr. and Mrs. Martian. Out. Bye, guys. Thank you. Come back to that.